Yahoo Utilities Board is now in session. We are here in Black Hills, Iowa Gas Utility, LLC, doing business as Black Hills Energy. Docket number SPU 2015-0039, Farm Tap Customer Meetings. I would like to thank everyone for attending the customer comment meeting hearing in docket number SPU 2015-0039. My name is Jerry Huser and with me is Nick Wagner. We are both Iowa Utilities Board members. Prior to starting our formal agenda, I would like to thank the Webster City Community Theater for allowing us the use of their facility. I would also like to point out that the uh, restrooms are downstairs and that in case of uh, fire or emergency, the exit doors are straight out the back of the theater and in case of inclement weather, we will go to the basement. If you have a cell phone, I would ask that you take it out and you place it, either turn it off or place it on vibrate mode. Tonight's meeting is a part of a docket in which Black Hills Energy has filed a proposed plan to address safety concerns related to farm cap service lines. The utilities board is holding six meetings throughout the state to allow farm tap customers and other customers the opportunity to ask questions about the Black Hills Energy proposal. This is the sixth and final of those meetings. With us today are several members of the Iowa Utilities Board staff as well as the Office of Consumer Advocate, which is a division of the Iowa Department of Justice, and Mr. Tracy Peterson with Black Hills Energy. I will begin today by referencing and asking Mr. Cavada to give a short uh, overview of the Office of Consumer Advocate. Thank you. Um, my name is Paseo Cabeda. I am from the Office of Consumer Advocate, as the board introduced by the chair. Uh, the Office of Consumer Advocate is a division of the Iowa Attorney General's Office. Uh, our office is located in the same building with the Iowa Attorney's Board and we represent Iowa consumers in all aspects of issues that's presented in front of the Iowa Utilities Board. Uh, our office has uh, lawyers, technical uh, personnel, which is accountant, accountant, financial analysts, and engineers, and uh, <clears throat> any filings that's made with the Iowa Utilities Board is served to our office and we address uh, consumer complaints and rate cases, uh, any other filings that are docketed with the board and we will review all the issues that are filed with the board and we will file our part that will prove that the, that the company will provide safe, reliable service at a reasonable price. And when we present our issues, then the board will have two parties that are in front of them to decide the case. Um, in this case, we are, will be present to listen to the customers and we'll wait for the company's filing and we'll review and we'll file our part of the issues we have with it. So right now we are observing. So each of you should have a brochure and a handout notice. It looks like this, it's on our handout table. And on this document, it provides you with the information for our customer service section. So it has the telephone number or the email from which any party can make a comment or object to the proposal. You may also file as an intervener in this docket. An intervener is a party that will be participating and will have and receive all documents that are filed in the docket. A request to intervene in the docket should be made through the board's electronic filing system, which is also identified and information is on the yellow handout that we have. If you are wanting to request to intervene, you need to do so by September 26th. 
if you are unable to access or utilize any kind of technology or electronic filing system, you can again call the customer service section and they will assist you with your intervention documents. The board will establish a procedural schedule after it has completed its customer meetings and following the intervention date. We expect to have some type of a procedural schedule out after the 28th of the month. At this point in time, I would like to turn it over to Tracy Peterson from Black Hills Energy to make their presentation. Thank you, uh, Chair Huser. Uh, good evening, everyone. My name is Tracy Peterson. I'm Vice President of Operations for uh, Black Hills Energy here in Iowa, representing our utility. We're here tonight to uh, share some information about a filing that we've made with the Iowa Utility Board concerning what we call farm tab customers. And <clears throat> what I have on the wall behind me is a picture. Most gas facilities are underground, you don't see them. Uh, but this the picture behind me is a typical uh, farm tap meter set. Uh, these farm tap uh, situations are in rural areas, not, not in a community per se. Uh, the reason uh, they're out in the, in the rural areas is when the large natural gas transmission company built the pipelines decades ago, they offered a tap to the landowner uh, at that time when they, uh, for permission to put their pipeline on their property. So it allowed uh, landowners to have access to natural gas while they otherwise might not have uh, in exchange for access. And this is what a, a facility looks like, if you will. I've got a few slides here to talk about what our filing is, why we made this file, uh, how it will work, uh, the impacts to customers, etc. Our goal here is to improve <coughs> safety for these uh, farm tab uh, lines. Uh, the lines, and I'll show you a picture of one that's just a, a typical, the blue line is the line I'm referring to, and it connects to the meter set that I showed you on the, on the previous slide, and it goes up to the home or the premise, the outbuilding, and today that line is owned by the customer. The customer is completely responsible for the maintenance, uh, you know, the uh, credibility of that particular line. And in some cases, these lines are quite old. Not in every case, but in many cases. And <clears throat> over the decades, our company has been serving this customer, and we have raised uh, concern, safety concerns from our employees uh, and working with customers uh, with issues over time has led us down this path to present a proposal to the Iowa Utility Board to improve the safety for these lines. Um, I'm going to go through uh, kind of what we do today uh, as the customer's uh, uh, representative to provide service to these uh, premises. Uh, today, <clears throat> we, uh, we read the meter once a year. We add a product uh, in a, what's called an odorizer that's it's called Mercaptan, and it adds the smell to natural gas. The, gas that comes from these facilities is unodorized, meaning there potentially is no smell in the gas. So we put that product in there so that if there is a leak, uh, you know, people would have the opportunity, hopefully, to smell that and report it so that we can come out and see what's going on. Uh, the customer is responsible for, uh, owns all that, uh, the line, the odorizer, the regulators, the valves, everything. Uh, the facility that uh, is actually measuring the gas is owned by Northern Natural Gas Company. We are the agent that provides the billing for these uh, customers and the, and the gas consumed. Uh, we provide emergency response. Should there be an emergency that requires some, some uh, emergency uh, response? Uh, we also odorize and uh, read the meter on an annual basis that I talked about. Every five years, uh, recently we have agreed uh, with the Iowa Utility Board to 
perform some leak surveys from the home or the structure back towards uh, the, the meter set out in the field, if you will. And the, the reason we agreed to that is, again, to try to provide some uh, aspect of safety for the customer. And the challenges that we have found with providing the service is there are no records or very few records, if any. Uh, the materials often used back decades ago don't meet current code. We might not be able to locate to know exactly where that line is. And it, it really prohibits us from providing an accurate leak survey, if you will, maintenance to ensure that there's safety for the customer. This picture is de depicting change, what we're proposing. In this particular uh, line that was blue is now a different color, and what we're suggesting or offering our proposal is to take responsibility for these lines, basically take ownership of these lines after they have been tested. Uh, if the line passes the test, then we would take ownership, we would make a record of this line, uh, we would take responsibility for line locating this line in the future, any leaks that would uh, come on this line in the future, etc. So that's the change. <clears throat> what we're proposing as far as testing these lines that are out there is we would, we would uh, conduct a pressure check or test on these lines. We would basically shut the gas off uh, with the customer's knowledge. Uh, on a date and time, we plan that. And we would essentially pump it up with air to 100 pounds of pressure and we would test to see if it will hold pressure. If it, if it holds pressure, that's one of the tests that the line satisfied and we would go to the next. If it did not hold pressure, the, the line failed the test and we would propose to replace that line. The, uh, the second test that we perform is, is, is the materials that that line is made of is approved materials meeting code today. Uh, also, it can we locate that line so that uh, if there's excavating being done or if we're going to do a leak survey, we'll know exactly where that line is. We can perform the maintenance uh, as required. The other thing we would propose to do is to register these lines with Iowa One Call, so that if any contractor or homeowner <coughs> wants to do some excavating either on their premise or in this uh, area where this line is, we would respond to locate that line going forward to ensure public safety. Today, these lines are not registered with Iowa One Call, so if there's some, any excavation that's going on, there's no one that's going to show up to attempt to locate it other than maybe the property owner. Um, <clears throat> some lines uh, are already uh, uh, material that meet standards and it might be of steel, uh, coated wrap steel, what we call coated wrap steel. Those lines are protected or need to be protected methodically, meaning we put a slight electric charge to that in, in an EC bolt so that the current flow from the pipe to the soil is in the appropriate direction and it doesn't uh, corrode. So we'd also look for that uh, as well. As if they have a coated and wrapped line, is it cathodically protected, is it accurate, uh, does it meet the pressure test, all of those kinds of things. So that's what we propose to do. We've also have uh, recommended or offered two proposals to address lines that don't meet the test. One of the proposals that we've offered is to replace the entire line if the line fails any one of the tests that I went through. And it would cover the entire cost. We would set up a, basically an appointment with the customer. We would go through the testing process. If it failed, we would make uh, arrangements with that customer to replace that line. Uh, all of the expense to replace that line, we would hold their, that cost, that expense, if you will. We would hold it in an account until a future date where we would come in for a rate review and then ask to have that included in rates. The other proposal we have offered 
uh, is to replace the first 1,000 feet from the meter towards the, the structure. And again, we would hold those costs in an account until some future date when we are coming in for a rate review and it would be considered in a, in a larger rate case at that time. Anything beyond the 1,000 feet mark would be a customer's responsibility to pay for that, that section of line up front before we did any of the work. Again, the whole idea here is to improve safety of these lines going forward. So either option, our company would hold these expenses until a future date. We would ask for them to be included in our rate review. Uh, the calculations that we have provided uh, to the utility board in our filing is kind of a worst case scenario. Because today, we don't know exactly how many of these lines would fail the test or pass the test. So our calculations is based on an assumption we would replace every line, even though we know that won't need to happen. We know there's some landowners that have updated their line, it's, it meets code, it's able to locate it. Uh, so those you know, would just merely be tested in uh, part of the process. So in the worst case scenario, our calculations uh, at some future date when we have asked for these to be included in rates would be just slightly less than $1 a month for customers. This would impact all customers of Black Hills Energy in Iowa, not just farm tap customers. So we have what we call a general service rate class. In, to in today's rate design, uh, farm tap customers, uh, residential customers in our communities, and small commercial customers are in the general service rate class. And in our filing, based on today's current rate design, the impact to that customer group across the state of Iowa would be just less than a dollar a month. That's how we propose to handle the, the expense uh, for these lines. If approved, there would also be a 36 month surcharge that would cover the, the expenses that we held in this account um, during the, the period before our rate filing. So, the, how does the proposal benefit customers? Again, our filing is about safety. We have knowledge of working with these lines for literally decades with our employees. We are made aware of the issues and challenges that they see, they experience when they uh, work with our customers. We are very aware of issues that have happened in the past that deal with the line safety, lack of maintenance, lack of records, excavating when there's no way to locate the line to make it safe. That's what led us to, to make this file. Um, <clears throat> the other benefit is for customers that are served in this manner, the farm tap, is we will take responsibility for that line going forward. In today's uh, design, the landowner owns that line. They are responsible for the maintenance. They are responsible for any gas leaks <coughs> that would leak from this line. Uh, in times, that could be quite, quite costly. Uh, but in our proposal, we would be responsible for the line and we would be responsible for any leakage uh, in the line uh, going forward. The other benefit is we would register these with Iowa One Call. That is, uh, you know, in this day and age with excavation uh, and, and the consideration of damage prevention and control of, uh, you know, construction work site and, and the safety for the public, Having them registered with the Iowa One Call anytime uh, uh, excavation is done, uh, it's the law where you call One Call and we would respond to uh, to make that locate to attempt to make that safe for the, the excavation. Those are the benefits uh, that we feel are are relevant in this filing, and it's about public safety. Chair, that concludes my remarks. So we have now entered that time where if you have questions, we would appreciate it if you would 
ask them, I can't see if you're raising your hand or you want to. <laughs> so I, is there anyone that has any questions? Yes, sir. <clears throat> Why, uh, okay, I own a farm tap and everything, and we had to replace probably, I guess around 20 some years ago, it's, Farmer was chisel plowing and he dug up the old one, up the old one, and uh, anyhow, so that's a probably good shape. Uh, when uh, you guys propose this and take over it, I think it was like fifty-four hundred dollars or something like that to replace it at the time. Who's? I mean, is that just going to be a loss we're taking, and you guys take that line over? Yeah, in our proposal, what we're offering to do is to test these lines to, you know, make sure that they're pressure worthy, they meet current code, we can locate the line, uh, if there aren't any issues with that line, and then we would take responsibility of all the maintenance, uh, any leakage if it were to happen in the future, locating that line in the future. So. We would take responsibility for the line going forward, create records and maps, and have uh, we would be audited by the utility boards, uh, engineering and safety staff, just like they audit us uh, in the community today. So there's currently so no we'll provision. There's currently no provision in our in our filing that would you know potentially pay someone for a good line. We would be open to the conversation if that became an issue, but it's not in our current proposal. I would recommend that you make sure that you file that as both a comment, objection, or information for the board so that the board's aware that it needs to be addressed. It's right. the first time I've heard that issue being stated. So I think it's really important that you do file within the electronic filing system so that we have a comment or that piece of information on record in the in the docket. You're saying you're replacing them all because of the safety issue. Um, how many uh, farm taps do you have in, say, Iowa? And how many records do you have on hand where you've had injuries or deaths or whatever? From? Well, there's a, there's about 1,500 of these uh, facilities in the state of Iowa. And I don't have a specific number to tell you exactly how many issues that we have had with uh, farm tap lines, but just having worked uh, at the utility here for many, many years, it's, it's quite common across the state of Iowa to have these issues surface uh, continually. It, it's not every day, but it's frequent. Uh, there have been some injuries, some very serious injuries, and worse uh, in the history or time that I've worked at the utility. Uh, I'm not going to go into names and places, but yes, it's happened in Iowa. And it's, it's something that we, as employees of the utility serving customers, are concerned about, and that's what's led us to bring this uh, filing before the utility. A okay, person that owns a farm tap, he uh, reads the meter every month. Yes. And uh, he'll know when that's speaking because it's an extra amount of gas being used. I mean, I keep track of it monthly or whatever, so I got an average for over the years. I've been doing it for over 30 some years at the farm, and there was once I caught it that we had an extreme amount and it was uh, tight to a building that was leaving. And I mean, we caught it then and just shut it off out there in the field and uh, fixed it. You know, we didn't yeah. have nobody come tell us that there was a problem or nothing. I mean, we take care of it ourselves because it's ours at this time. Sure. So if you take it away from us, why, why are you taking it away from I, That's what I think. They're trying to Well, uh, really the design of our, of our filing is to take responsibility to ensure there's records kept 
at the frequency that we keep our records for the systems in town and they can be audited and there's some assurance that the lines are being maintained on all the lines. Not every customer is as diligent as you're suggesting that you've been. Uh, there are numerous, numerous uh, accounts that I have in my mind that there's no maintenance. They don't even know they own the line. They don't know they're responsible, even though we tell them. Don't they know it because they got to read the meter for you? They know they have to read the meter, and some of them don't even do that. And we end up going out to do that and invoicing them for that activity. So not everybody is as diligent as you have accounted for here. And that's part of the challenge is our employees go out to work. We're concerned about their safety because they don't know what to expect when they get there. These lines are, again, no records or very few records. We don't know what we're walking into with our employee safety and uh, the public safety. It's part of our job as a, as a utility is to ensure public safety. We have no control, no <coughs> sense of these lines are safe for the public or not. That's why we have filed this, is about safety mentioned about pressurizing them to 100 pounds. They're not even, what, 16, 18 pounds at the house? Coming off that line? Well, the lines that are uh, in Iowa that are part of the farm tap program are typically either 10 or 30 pound delivery. And in our procedures that when we install lines in town, we pump everything up to 100 pounds to ensure that it'll hold pressure. And once we have reported that, we know the line is good, and then we charge it with gas, and then we go through our normal maintenance from that point forward. So it's something standard in our industry as far as the pressure amount. That's common. Yeah, I don't know if our good one can hold up to that. We do it every day. We do it every day. We pump them up to 100 pounds every day. So uh, it's something we've been doing for decades. So. Mr. Peterson, when he asked the question, if you could repeat some of because I didn't catch that. Okay. What was the question, the last question? Well, I just said that uh, we've never had anybody that I know of ever come out and pump ours up with that kind of pressure in the 35 years I've been. Yeah, that, that is not part of our procedure today because we Thank don't you. own the line. Well, it said periodic safety leak checks in that flyer, and I've never seen it happen. Yeah, we, we actually walk the line or attempt to walk the line with what we call leak detection equipment. It's above ground. Uh, it's very sensitive. It detects parts per million, uh, and we do that on, on every five years or attempt to. And again, some lines we're able to locate and identify exactly where the line is and we're assured that we're on top of it. And many lines we do not. Well, ours got a wire, I think, that they put on it before it was put in. So yeah. they can, I guess, trace it down. Yeah. Whatever with a gun detector or whatever they use. Yeah, it's so common to use a, a wire with plastic uh, yeah. pipe today and what we're doing is locating that wire that's installed correctly right above the pipe that indicates where the line should be. That's very common today uh, in, in today's construction. Are there any other questions? I'm also a farm chef customer and we experienced a leak met a few months ago which was fixed at our expense, not to the extent of this gentleman's but it was substantial. The leak was small enough that it did not show up on our field month after month, so we were not aware of it. But it made us realize that line's been in there for 40 some years, whenever that original line went in. And it's a long way from my house. I would love to know that that line is safe and up to code and that my house isn't going to be in danger. My question is specifically, why would you decide to only go 1,000 feet as opposed to maybe going all the way to somebody's house? The, the answer to your question is we have proposed and given the utility board some options. One option is to replace the entire amount and we hold those costs until the next rate review 
which would be you know sometime in the future. The other option is a thousand feet. Why a thousand feet? When we looked at the information that we have, based on where the tap is located and the premise is located, we took some GPS readings, and as kind of as the, the crow would fly, so to speak, straight line of sight, the, the average, or 80% of them, or 1,000 feet or less. 20% are longer than 1,000 feet. So we felt we needed to give them uh, some options based on the, the little bit of information we have about these lines. Uh, and it would be up to whatever they decided based on the information we could provide to help make this. Do you think there might be an option if you went that route for those of us who do live further than that that we could extend that line? and ensure it was safe all the way to the house that our own space? In our process, we would test the entire thing to know that that line is, meets all the criteria that I discussed. We will test the entire thing. If it leaks, the cost recovery component would be 1,000 feet in one of our proposals. The other one would be the entire length. The customer would just be responsible for more than 1,000 feet in that scenario. Yes, sir. No. Uh, <clears throat> I just want to clarify. Right now, we've got about 1,500 of these across the state that are not under the one call system. So emergency responders have no clue that they're out there. They're going across farm ground that farmers are tiling or whatever. There is no way to locate those lines at this point. Is that correct? Uh, they're not registered with the Iowa one call. Okay. Um, some of these lines we do have the ability to locate based on, they might have been put in recently, it could have been on a different kind of material, like coated and wrapped steel, we would be able to locate those. Um, but as far as being, uh, you know, having some record of where the line actually lays, we don't have records like that. Um, so if there is an emergency that arises, typically we get a call from the customer or Northern Natural Gas, and then we respond to deal with whatever emergency there is. There are times that we're called by the local emergency uh, folks, whether it be the fire, the sheriff, people like yourself. There are times we're notified by you, and we come and respond and deal with whatever issues there. So it is a challenge uh, from, we don't have records, we don't know where these lines are. Uh, that's a challenge and there's no way to locate all of these lines today. But one, excuse me, once you have this taken care of, then those would be on a map. We would be able to have access to those just like we have to do every other pipeline going across the county. We would be able to pull a map of those lines go across roads go across so if we have so if we have a field fire she's got a farm that has pipe going across the farm we have a field fire and there's a gap there's a leak there but we don't know anything about it and her captain is uh, bleached out by the dirt so you still have an odorless gas at ground level we have the potential for a serious incident from just a simple field fire, unless we know that there is pipeline in that area that we can be aware of as we're working through those emergencies at that time. Sure. Um, <clears throat> we would register all these with Iowa One Call, and one simple call to Iowa One Call, we'll get a response. Uh, if it's a normal locate, we come out within 48 hours. It's a, if it's an emergency locate, we respond as quickly as possible. Uh, as far as maps, we would know the GPS coordinates again for both ends of this line, and we would have the ability to locate the line. We would have as built drawings of this line in our own records. Don't know that that is something that you or other emergency management personnel would want literally 1,500 records 
but but I wouldn't need 1,500. Right. Right. You don't have 1,500 customers in the county. You have them across the state, so I would only need what's available <clears throat> in my county in my response districts. Correct. It could be several hundred. It's possible. We, have to, we haven't really talked about how or if we would disperse maps for these lines, but if that would help uh, with safety because they are in a rural setting, uh, you know, that's a good conversation that we'd be interested in having. How can we help you and others responding to emergencies be as safe as possible? Yes. Um, <clears throat> why, uh, if I wasn't a farm tax customer and you're saying you're going to charge all your customers a dollar or somewhere in that area, don't know for sure that, why should I pay for a pipeline that's going to be owned by you? It's a, it's a good question. Uh, my example of how we would propose the cost recovery is with our current rate design that has been previously approved by the Iowa Utility Board. So as an example, today, a line that is replaced in Webster City, Iowa, if I use Webster City as an example, at the next rate review, with their current rate design, farm cap customers would help pay for that in their rates. And so our proposal is the opposite, where if we are approved to, to do this process and replace lines, Farm tap customers would have the help and support of people in town to help pay for that cost of that process. That's with our current rate design as it is today. At a future rate uh, review process, that process could change depending on uh, people that intervene or the utility board determined that some other way was more fair. We're just giving an example under the current great structure that we have today. Well, I just don't think it's right to for me to pay for something else that somebody else is getting ownership of. Because of, uh, I mean, I could see it if, uh, if it stayed the same and it did the same thing, it did it for the farmers or the people that own the line right now and you charge it for it. I, I don't see that much difference in where, where it would be for them to pay for it if it's unsafe right now. And if you find out it's unsafe, put it that way with your pressure checks, I think you got to make that the uh, owner's responsibility to whether to have it replaced or not and keep it the ownership right in the same group because it's going to throw another whammy at everybody as far as cost. And, I mean, you got enough of them coming along already that surcharges and thought stuff that it's just, you know, everything's going up. You know, I mean, you can't deny that. It's, everything's just costing more and more. This is just another add-on to it. You know? Understand what you're saying, and that's part of why we're having these meetings is to get feedback from consumers. Uh, what we proposed is a proposal to make these safe, and the outcome might be something different than what we proposed, but that's part of the value of having meetings like this, is to get feedback from customers like yourself. Well, I read in consumer reports that uh, there is something going on like this with all the utility companies because people are getting more efficient, that they're making less money because people are using less and less. It's electric companies, gas companies. But uh, this, they said to watch out for surcharges and stuff like this to be added on. And that's kind of the way I see what's happening right now. I mean, there's an article in Consumer Reports about it. And that's why I got so concerned about it because it's just another cost that's added on that we have no control of. Understand your position. Our filing is about customer safety, fuel line safety. That's our that's what our filing, that's the motivation behind this filing. Let the farmer take care of it if it's unsafe. I think you've done a very good job in getting your point across, and I hope you put that in writing and make sure that's on the docket. I want to come to meetings.
meeting first. Nope. You bring it up. So. Are there any other questions? I want to ask one again. Um, I'm with the board staff. And while it's not common for us to ask questions, we realize that this is being videotaped. I want to be sure that uh, we're asking the questions that have been asked. Oh, can you hear me? I guess you want me to stand up? Yes. Okay, that will work. Okay, so I'm going to ask some of the questions that were asked at the other five farm task meetings, which were kind of culmination of the targeted areas. Uh, the first one was, will the line extensions be available for customers that want to run lines to alternate areas, areas such as a grain dryer? And for the farm tap customers whose land that has been subdivided, will it be available for them if they want to uh, tap off that farm tap? This, this filing proposal is meant to address the, the lines that are currently there and uh, being serving customers today in the ground and to address the safety uh, issues of the lines that are existing. Uh, if there are requests for extensions or additions, that process is currently uh, has a process in, in, a, in a, how we handle that to look whether uh, the revenue that's generated by that addition supports the investment. So that's not part of our filing. It's to address only what's in the ground today, the safety uh, and uh, the compliance of these lines. Um, should the line fail the pressure test, when will the line replacements begin? We would work with each customer individually uh, to schedule that, that process on their land uh, based on you know, their situation. Uh, our intent is to work in the shoulder months of the year, which is meetings before crops or after crops are harvested. We would work with the farmer and the landowners to coordinate that effort. Uh, explain the provisions of the tracer wire requirement and how will this apply to the existing customers that have steel lines or that have recently replaced the lines? The tracer wire is uh, just a, uh, it's a conductor and it is commonly installed with plastic uh, gas line infrastructure. Uh, we don't have a way to locate plastic material. So we use the, lot, the steel conductor right on top or the copper conductor right on top of the pipe so that we can locate and know where the pipe is. That is used only in plastic uh, applications. If a customer has a steel line and it is coated and wrapped, methodically protected, it's welded, it meets current standards, that line probably could be located and won't need a replacement. Uh, if, if the steel line is, is made of screw fittings, uh, not coated, not methodically protected, it wouldn't meet compliance and we, we would want to replace that with a plastic material and install the line locating wire with it so that we can locate it more. Thank you. And lastly, um, what is included within the line replacements and do you plan on replacing the regulators as well? Um, the meter set itself, it's out in the field that I had a picture uh, of, that is owned by Northern Natural Gas. That is their responsibility. Uh, it basically takes the line pressure and cuts it down to the 10 or 30 pounds. The line that delivers the gas up to the consumer's house or structure, there is a regulator uh, it takes oftentimes down to a quarter pound. We would look at that particular device as it current, meet the current standards. If it does not, we would make a replacement at the time we replace the line. If it meets current standards, we would just simply perform maintenance on it and reinstall it. Are there any other questions? I'll just say that our original one that was ripped up by the farmer, the chisel pump, was copper. So I don't know if that's... Was what? Do you mean it's copper line? It wasn't steel. But, 
was copper, I suppose, to keep it from deteriorating. Our experience uh, with our employees is we, we found a variety of wine types. Copper is something we find that doesn't currently need code. We find water pipe. Uh, we find uh, plastic pipe that meets code. It's, it's what we use today. Uh, we find what's called X2. It's a mild steel tubing that has a, a coating on it. It was typically used in the, in the 60s. We see and find PVC, uh, which is typically very brittle after it's had some time and age to be in the ground. Uh, there's various types. We see just about anything you could imagine, we find it. And oftentimes where we have found leaks, someone has been there before and attempted to repair, replace, add on, and it's, it's a problem. So we see it all, quite honestly. Are there any additional questions? Hearing none, the board would like to thank everyone who's in attendance tonight and appreciate your comments and your questions. I would like to remind you that any additional comments may be filed in the electronic filing system or for those that are in attendance tonight, Jane Whetstone in the second row will be happy to assist you or provide you with information so that we can make sure your comments are in our electronic filing system. If you have any additional comments or questions for the Office of Consumer Advocate or for Black Hills Energy, they will be here for a little while past our adjournment or they can be reached by the numbers that are also available for you on the table in the back of the room. Seeing or hearing no further questions, I'm going to adjourn our comment hearing for the evening with my thanks and appreciation for your attendance and participation. We're adjourned.